the system of equations We must deal with them all at once Always looking for solutions Positive outlook overcome Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is meant for linear algebra students who are just going into null spaces or spaces themselves. So you have just likely and hopefully learned about vector spaces. And now we're really gonna step into two major topics called null spaces and column spaces. There's gonna be a lot of familiarity with this material. So please do not get too discouraged or confused as we move forward. It will seem like a lot of the definitions we list out are repetitive of our previous definitions and theorems. And that's okay. It's just because we're building our language on top of something called a vector space now. Rather than start this video with a theorem or a definition, let's start with just an example. Show that the set, this set right here, W, which is a set of all vectors in R cubed, such that the entries of those vectors satisfy negative a plus 2b, a minus b, and 2a plus 7b, where a and b are real numbers. We're going to show that that set is a vector space, or we're going to provide an example demonstrating that it's not a vector space. The first thing I want to note here, if you want to show that a set is a vector space, your immediate reaction should be, oh, do I have to show all of the axioms? Because that's normally what's required for a set to be a vector space. And remember from our previous work, this is just the messy previous work that we had before, that a vector space must satisfy all 10 of these axioms. So like I said, it should seem pretty daunting for me to give you a set and say, prove that that's a vector space or provide a counter example that it's not. However, something that's gonna be very helpful with this set of vectors is that they all exist within R cubed. I'll actually write that down. So note that the set W is just a subset of R cubed. That's what that notation right there means. And by the way, R cubed itself is actually a vector space. This allows us to prove that W is a vector space if we can just prove that W is a subspace of R cubed. And that's from a theorem we were introduced to recently. Specifically, if I go through my critical theorem list that we have been building all throughout linear algebra, and as I often will say, this list is not an exhaustive list of every single theorem that we've learned in linear algebra. It's just the set of theorems that I find to be the most critical as you move forward in linear algebra. And you can see some older theorems in here, but as I scroll down, you can see this very last theorem on this page, every subspace is a vector space and every vector space is a subspace. That theorem specifically will be very powerful in this example because it's telling us since W is a subset of R cubed and R cubed is a vector space, if we could just show that W is a subspace of R cubed, then because it's a subspace, it has to be a vector space. Let me write that down as a goal. Now that we have a goal set out, let's go ahead and hopefully show that W is a subspace. And remember, all you need for W to be a subspace is closure under addition and under scalar multiplication. To help us out in this process, I'm actually going to rewrite this single vector as a sum of two vectors. We know from our previous work that you can represent that single vector as a linear combination of these two vectors right here. So every vector in the set W can be represented as a linear combination of these two vectors. Remember, A and B is just any real number that we want. Specifically, if A and B were both zero, then I happen to know that the zero vector is an element of the set W. I'm not gonna write that down because, well, to show that W is a subspace, you really need to show closure under addition and scalar multiplication. So I need a bit more than just having the zero vector in there. 
Let's start with closure under vector addition. We'll take two vectors, not just these two vectors, but I'm really saying two linear combinations of these vectors and add them together. So any vector within W has that form right here. All I'm gonna do is just say that this black ink represents our first vector, which I think in the previous video we would call something like U. And this green ink will be our second vector from our set, which we'll call V. If you were to add those two vectors together, you get the following linear combination of the two original vectors from our set, negative one, one, two, and two, negative one, seven. Notice the coefficients are real numbers, and therefore the resulting vector right there is actually still in W. So we have closure under vector addition. Now let's establish closure under scalar multiplication. So again, take an arbitrary vector from W, and what we're gonna do is multiply that by some number C. Distributing the C to each of those two vectors, at least the coefficients of those vectors, we get this linear combination of the original vectors within our set, and that linear combination has real coefficients, therefore, it could be written in this form right here, where we have real coefficients on those original vectors, negative one, one, two, and two, negative one, seven. And thus, this is an element of W as well. So we have closure under vector addition, closure under scalar multiplication, which implies W is a subspace. And remember, whenever you say some set is a subspace, you have to tell us what it's a subspace of. It's a subspace of R cubed, and remember, subspaces are vector spaces. And we are done proving that W is a vector space. Now, I have not started with any theory in this video yet, but there is a reason why I want to start with this specific example. Because this set of vectors can be generated from these two vectors right here. And the fact that we can generate every single vector in W from those two vectors makes those two vectors very, very special. And that opens the gateway to a conversation about null spaces and column spaces and bases. So let's define what a null space is. I think it's very important. So as we move forward though, just remember that we're just renewing old concepts with new definitions. The null space of an M by N, so it doesn't have to be square, it can be a rectangular non-square matrix, is written as null of A, and it is a set of all solutions to the homogeneous equation AX equals zero. So it's the set of vectors in RN, because that's where X is from, RN, that map to the zero vector in R M. And that's exactly what I'm stating here. The null space of A is a set of vectors X, and that should have vector notation on it, such that the vector X is in R N, because it's the input or in the domain of our transformation, or the domain of this equation, if you will, such that A X is equal to zero. If speaking in terms of linear transformations, which is basically what I just said, the null space is a set of vectors mapped to the zero vector. Visually, it sort of looks like this. You have a bunch of vectors in your domain of your transformation. You have a bunch of vectors in the range of your transformation. Now, we all know that the zero vector in your domain always maps to the zero vector in the range. And that's simply because the homogeneous equation, AX equals zero, always has a trivial solution, X equals zero. That is, A times zero is equal to zero. So plug in zero, get out zero. However, we have already run into a lot of transformations and a lot of matrix equations where solutions to the homogeneous matrix equation consist of more than just the trivial solution. So we might have an infinite number of vectors also map over to zero. 
that set of vectors from the domain that have that property form what we call the null space of A. It's just an easier way to talk about the set of vectors that map to zero. That's a great way to think about it. I just need a name for the set of vectors that maps over to the zero vector from a linear transformation. Up to this point, it's kind of astonishing that we've never actually had a name for that set. So let's take a look at an example here and determine if this vector W is in the null space of that matrix A. Now it's a very quick check to see if a vector is in the null space of A, because if that vector is in the null space of A, then A times that vector would have to be the zero vector. So it's a very, very quick check. And because that product does become the zero vector, W is definitely in the null space of A. So there are gonna be some patterns we're gonna develop as we use the definitions in this video and future videos that I wanna set forth now. The first thing I need you to notice is if I hand you a vector or if you're given a vector and you're asked, is that in the null space of A? It's a very quick check. It's very easy to check if a specific vector is in the null space of A. However, it's actually not easy just by quick cursory glance at this matrix to say what is the null space of A. In other words, what are all the vectors that are in the null space of A? Very hard to tell just from the given matrix. But again, given a vector and asked, is that vector in the null space? That's a quick check, it's a quick multiplication. Another thing I wanna draw your attention to, this picture right here is incredibly helpful. Remember, the null space is a set of all these vectors that map over to zero in the range. And we know that zero itself is one of those vectors always, because A times zero is zero. So I happen to know the null space always has zero. Also, the null space, because it's a set of inputs to our matrix equation, is a subset of our N and Rn is a vector space. So if I can show that the null space is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication, then I can easily show that the null space is a subspace of Rn. And what gives me hope that the null space is a subspace of Rn is the fact that we already have the zero vector in it. Remember, subspaces require the zero vector to be in them. That is a necessary condition, but it is not sufficient. We still have other things we need to happen, closure specifically under addition and multiplication. And that's what this theorem is stating. The null space is a subspace of Rn. So the null space of an M by N matrix A is a subspace of Rn. Let's go ahead and prove that. Remember, I don't actually have to prove that zero is in the null space of A as long as I can prove that we have closure under vector addition and scalar multiplication. The closure under scalar multiplication automatically gives us the zero vector is in the null space of A. We'll start with a very simple statement. Let's just go ahead and grab a couple vectors from our null space and a scalar. And rather than proving closure under addition and scalar multiplication separately, I'm gonna teach you how to prove them simultaneously. Remember, we'd have closure under vector addition if u plus v was also in the null space of A, and we'd have closure under scalar multiplication if c times u was in the null space of A. And to be in the null space of A, I would need A times these vectors to turn into zero. So what I'm gonna do here, first of all, is I'm gonna grab that, move that off to the side because that is technically my scratch work. I want to show that. And second, I'm gonna just take the matrix A and multiply it by Cu plus V. If this turns into the zero vector, then I have simultaneously shown that the null space is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. Now from properties of matrix vector multiplication, we know that this is equal to 
A-C-U plus A-V. Remember, properties of matrix vector multiplication, you can factor that constant out front. However, U and V were already in the null space of A. That is, A times U must be the zero vector and A times V must be the zero vector. And that summation right there is the zero vector. Thus, we have actually just shown in one fell swoop closure under both vector addition and scalar multiplication. Thus, the null space of A is a subspace of the vector space it's contained within. And remember, it's, a, it's contained within the vector space Rn. And that is the entire proof. Very fast, nice, clean, easy proof. Not terrible. Now, I don't want to go much further than this in this video because I want you just to get the idea of the null space from this video, but nothing more. So in the next video, we're going to go through an explicit description of the null space. So we'll get more explicit with how we could describe all the vectors within the null space of A. I hope that you're enjoying linear algebra and I hope that this video is helpful for you. Have a great day. Be a good human. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. Really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.